Guys, you've probably seen the Rivian, their electric car, right? It's the O1S and the O1T. They will have some changes made to them so that they can bring out a cheaper version. If you've seen Rivian sales recently, uh, Tesla is actually delivering twice as many Cybertrucks as Rivian are electric trucks. It's a bit of a surprise to some of them. I mean, obviously Ford is delivering way more than both Tesla and Rivian combined in terms of electric trucks. But Rivian saying, you know what, we have potentially a way to make our electric ute much cheaper. It's already, in my opinion, very well priced. It's a great truck for the money, but this is a really good decision from Rivian. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. A couple of good changes here, guys. Rivian R1S and the R1T will get lithium iron phosphate batteries, I believe from CATL or CATL. These batteries are much cheaper and their vehicles will also get new heat pumps, which will enable 405 miles of range in the city and 340 miles of range on the highway. There is no such thing as range anxiety when you have that kind of range. I'm surprised by this range. I mean, I don't know how Rivian have managed this in these these trucks, these SUVs, they look like bricks. They do. They're basically bricks driving on the road. So amazing efficiency here from Rivian. You, you've got to say, it doesn't matter if you're a fan of Tesla, it doesn't matter if you're a fan of BYD, whoever it may be, you've got to give, you've got to give credit where credit's due. Rivian, I mean, massive kudos to you guys. Another big change with the efficiency, aside from these new LFP batteries that Rivian are going to be using, is heat pumps. Both were spotted in a leaked certification document posted on the Rivian owner's forum, the 50, the actually 64 page document, uh, pretty long. It mentions EPA estimated range figures for the new battery and wheel combinations. Now, I believe the wheels might be a bit smaller as well than Rivian's current wheels. That improves range too. So guys, if you own a Rivian, you want to get more range out of it, put some smaller wheels and tires on it. That'll get you some more range. The paper says the upcoming 2025 Rivian R1S and R1T will be fitted as standard with a dual motor and a 92.5 kilowatt hour LFP battery. I have no idea how the hell are they going to get this, guys, how are they going to get this range out of a 92.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery? Um, this just sounds, sounds insane. Now, it's actually quite a heavy battery pack, though. It's 727 kilograms, which is 1,602 pounds. Uh, by contrast, the batteries they currently use are not LFP, and they are pretty big. They're even bigger than that. They are 106 kilowatt hours and they actually weigh the same weight. Uh, well, actually not the same weight. They are 70, about 73 kilograms heavier, 796 kilograms, which is 1,754 pounds. Volume is 562 liters. So these new LFP batteries will be um, smaller by around about well, what's six plus seven point about 14 kilowatt hours smaller, but still have massive range. I don't understand how Rivian are going to do this. Anyhow, right now with Rivian trucks and SUVs, they have a standard plus battery. It has 121 kilowatt hours in size. And it's um it's also offer they also offer a large pack, which is 135 kilowatt hours, and a max pack, which is massive. It's 149 kilowatt hours. That was that must weigh more than 2,000 pounds. The new LFP battery is smaller. Um, will it really offer this kind of range? Honestly, I don't think so. I think there's something going on with this document. I think somebody's playing some tricks here. I don't see how it would get this kind of range with this size lithium ion phosphate battery in a brick vehicle. A brick shaped vehicle, they look great. I love the design of them, but they're not aerodynamic at all. They sit high on the road. There's no way they're going to get this kind of range unless this is some sort of amazing hybrid lithium ion phosphate battery. If this was the new um, one of, say, Cato's uh, condensed battery, maybe, yeah, okay, it would get this kind of range. In fact, it would get more range than this if it was that, but it's not. So I don't know how they're going to do this. I don't know if this is true. And the other thing that's surprising is apparently um, this is with 20-inch wheels, and it will actually have 22-inch wheels. And the company is saying this really strange thing. I've never heard this from a manufacturer ever for any EV they've ever sold. They're saying it's going to be more efficient with 22 inch wheels. So bigger, bigger wheels. I don't think that's true. There's something weird going on here, guys, with this document. It's been spread around. The media are all printing their stuff out. I, I, I'm, I'm a bit baffled. 
Anyhow, when you have a closer look though, here's the reason guys for the, the difference between wheel sizes. The 20 inch wheels have big all-terrain tires, all-terrain rubber. So that's gonna make them less efficient. And because they're all-terrain tires, they have a bigger sidewall, it's gonna make them actually bigger than the 22s, which have uh, more low profile rubber. Anyway, what's the weight? The R1S curb weight is 6,532 pounds. It's not too bad. And the R1T is 6,507 pounds. The same document includes range figures for the R1S. With 20 inch wheels, uh, all terrain tires, it's gonna get 380 miles for city range and 321 miles of range on the highway. If that's with this lithium ion phosphate battery, that size, I don't know what Rivian's doing, but it's some kind of magic and I'm, I'm all for it. That's amazing. Now, apparently with those 21 inch wheels, it's gonna get more range. Um, with the sorry, I should say with the 22 inch wheels, it's the dual motor version is gonna give 405 miles of city range and 339 miles on the highway. Yeah, anyway, here's why I don't um, understand this document. The current R1S with the smallest battery pack, which is bigger than this one, has only 270 miles of range. So what has Rivian done to this truck? How have they made it so much more efficient? Will a heat pump really give you that much more range? Will these new LFP batteries really give you that much, much more range? Well, I wouldn't have thought so, but who knows? Maybe there's some sort of hybrid battery pack. It's possible that it could be. Speaking of charging, the same DC charge rate. The charging for these trucks is 210 kilowatt. It will be the same. Um, so the LFP batteries will have that same charging speed. So the biggest change here, guys, is these trucks will be cheaper because using these lithium ion phosphate batteries, smaller battery pack, cheaper battery chemistry, which is actually really good. You can charge these batteries to 100%. You don't have to worry about it, you know, charge it to 80%. Supercharge these batteries, you know, frequently. That's not going to be a problem. Don't do it every day, but frequently it's not going to be a problem. So I think it's a really good choice from Rivian here. And I've been saying Rivian should do this for quite a while. They've been talking about it for a while. It's great to see. Guys, Rivian, please sell, please come sell your electric trucks here in Australia. We don't have anything. Um, essentially, companies are saying, oh, it's too hard to make electric trucks for Australia. Guys, bring them here. It can't be that hard to do them in right-hand drive. I know heaps of people. I've been, I've spoken to people in person numerous times who are like, Sam, I really want a Rivian electric truck. Rivian, just letting you know, there's heaps of people here in Australia who love pickup trucks. They want an electric one. You guys have one. Bring them here. Thanks for watching.